Rudolf Lutz at the wonderful Kuhn organ here at the church in Stein. Herzlich willkommen zu unserer zweiten Sondersendung, diesmal zur Wachkantate BBV 4 in der Gissenstein, wie gerade erwähnt. A very warm welcome to our special program on Bach's Cantata VWV4 at the Church in Stein. Bienvenidos a nuestra segunda edición sobre la Cantata de Bach VWV4 en la Iglesia de Stein. Rudolf Lutz und ich möchten Sie zunächst willkommen heißen und wir möchten uns bei Ihnen bedanken, bei den Tausenden von Zuschauerinnen und Zuschauern, die unsere letzte Sendung im März, damals ging es um Actus Tragicus, in der ganzen Welt angeschaut haben. Und es ist schon so, Bach der Welt näher zu bringen, dies ist eigentlich unsere Mission. Da einfach hat halber werden wir uns zunächst auf Englisch unterhalten und auch die Erläuterungen, die Rue de Lutz später zur Kantate äh, halten wird, werden auch auf Englisch sein. We would like to say thank you to the many, many, many people around the world who watched our last program on Bach's Kantate 106 last March. Uh, bringing Bach closer to the world is our mission. We will speak, talk to each other in English in the beginning, and then uh, Rudy will be answering questions in English, and he will also do his performance in English. Nos gustaría darles las gracias a los miles de personas que vieron nuestra última, uh, nuestro último programa sobre el actus tragicus el pasado mes de, mes de marzo. Pues está claro que eh, presentar a Bach y llevarlo por todo el mundo es la misión de nuestra fundación. Vamos a hablar en inglés al principio y las explicaciones que Ruedi Lutz dará sobre la cantata Chris Lack en todo España serán también en inglés. So, dear Rudy, today we are in Stein, same church. Longer hair. It's exactly. <laughs> Different tie. I'm exactly the same as last time. <laughs> uh, a month later, second program. Now, we are tackling today a very complex cantata by Bach. And so we thought that we might give the opportunity to our many friends around the world to send in their questions about the piece. And I'm very happy to report that we have received many, many questions and you will be answering some of them. Unfortunately, not all of them, because our time is limited, but uh, we, will be, we will be answering the questions to those persons who uh, send the questions we are not answering live. Now, um, you will be explaining lots of different things about the cantata, but here is a question we got from Japan Regarding the existing two versions of the work, namely the early Mühlhausen version and the later one that Bach wrote for Leipzig. So the question is, why were trombones and zinc added to the score of 1724? Was it Bach's own will? Is it due to the style of that era? A very interesting question, Schwann. Uh, I would say a few things to this question. The first is, we don't exactly know how uh, the score looked in the Mühlhausen time. It must have been something like 1707. But we've got the feeling it might be this cantata, which Bach wrote to say, guys, I would like to be church musician at this beautiful church, and this is what I can write. Anyway, they surely didn't have uh, um, trombones in the cornetto. I could imagine that um, because it was a day of feast, it was the first Easter day, Sunday, they said, we need a brick, a big sound, and we would love to have some brass. You remember in the Weihnachts Oratorium and also in the Easter Oratorium, you've got trumpets. And so Bach perhaps thought, I think I could take um, for the choir parts in number two and 
uh, also for the soloists in number three, and of course for the last chorale, a few trombones for the alto, the tenor, and for the bass, and then add for the soprano a cornetto. It sounds lovely, and I think it, it, it's, it fits also very fine for um, this style, this olden style, where you realize in this cantata, uh, Bach uh, knew what his uh, um, um, family wrote, his uncles who were composers, and also um, what Pachelbel wrote, and they loved to take um, colaparte trombones and cornetos with the choir. Well, that's a fascinating answer. Here's a different question about the piece that we got from Germany. Uh, isn't it unusual for a relatively early cantata, such as Christ lag in Todesbanden, to have two movements featuring just continual instrumentation? That's an interesting question for insiders, but I'll try to explain it. Perhaps I can also go to the keyboard. Um, Actually, normally, for all the choir pieces, you had the continuo always going parallel with the bass. And here, we've got one, one part, it's number two, no, it's number three, sorry. You hear um, this um, bass. Pam pim pam pim pam pim pam pim pam 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 and the soprano will be singing. So feiern wir das hohe Fest. The unusual thing is that the basso continuo already starts the music. And I found a very interesting trace in uh, Hamburg in the opera. It was the newest fashion to start with a ritornell, with only a cello and a basso continuo. And I could imagine that Bach wanted to show uh, to all the officials, you know, I also understand what happens in the wide world of music. Well, you know, most of you know that the, what we're doing tonight here is actually a kind of surrogate for a real cantata performance, which would have taken place today elsewhere with our choir and orchestra and four wonderful soloists. Um, and as you know, our orchestra plays on purity instruments. So now here's a question from somebody else. What is your opinion regarding using modern instruments for early music playing? Um, not quite sure if I understand the question, but if I would say modern instruments, I would think normal uh, strings, 440, uh, hertz. A bass guitar, for instance. What did you the, say? A bass guitar. A bass guitar, yeah. wow. Well <laughs> Why not, actually? Yeah. Why not? I think I'll, I'll try a few things. If I if, uh, take a, a nice uh, uh, piano here, perhaps uh, what we would say to this. Um, you could also take it Swingle singers did it, Louis Armstrong might have done it and of course also Jacques Lussier. I love it. Bach you can play like you want. It's, you've got no limits. He's always great. So talking about limits, uh... How do you decide about whether you want a man or a woman to sing the solo alto part? That's a very interesting question, especially when we, Schwann, you yes. and me, we look for the singers and we always look at the part 
um, of the cantata and say who might fit. I think the most important thing, I, I'm sure you accord with me, is we've got a good singer, a professional singer who can keep the pitch, who understands how the counterpoint goes, knowing that a violin is playing with us and not just only celebrating it. And I mean, um, if you think of um, the aria, want to have a voice like that. Uh, I mean, it also functions, the music is still great, but perhaps if it's thinking it's an alto singing Peter, who was so unhappy that he had uh, um, really um, uh, lost himself in not saying, here I am for you, Jesus, then perhaps an altus might be nice, but it's also lovely with an alt voice. We decide sometimes like that we've got um, a public who loves altus, men's voicing, seeing that. Of course, in the time of Bach, I'm sure it was that. And uh, we've got also public who hates it when we've got an altus, so we sometimes change it around. What is your decision, um, uh, Schwann, in that case, if this question comes to you? Well, you know, uh, I'm quite gender neutral in, in most cases. I think it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's about the quality, it's about the phrasing, it's about the technical, uh, the technical level of the voice, it's about the expression, and it's about making justice to what Bach was trying to convey. So I think we're quite liberal in that regard. Liberal is probably a good word for that. But I know, I see that it's now almost 7 o'clock, and you know we're in Switzerland, so we try to work like a Swiss-made high-precision clock, and so I'm afraid we have no more time for any other questions. As I mentioned, um, we will be writing to those of you who send in questions which haven't been answered now, so don't worry about that, you will get your answer. But I think we have a very complex, um, intricate piece to discover tonight, and so I would like to say, Rudy, please show us everything you have to say about Christ Lag into this band. Thank you very much, Juan, and let's dig forward. in. First, I would like to start with a Easter oratorio, which Bach wrote, and this sounded very festive and victorious. We could go on with George Frederick Handel. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And then kings of kings forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Kings of kings forever, forever. But there are other reverences in George Frederick Handel's Messiah. If you think of this. I know that my 
It sounds really like a, a love song. How does the beginning of the cantata, Christ lay in death's bonds, Christ lag in todesbanden, sound? You've got a sinfonia for strings, two violin parts, two viola parts, as of the old-fashioned way of using two violas, and the continuo. I thought it might be nice if I would play that on the organ, that you just hear how affect the character of the music is. Un momento, Rudy. Los zapatos. Sorry. Your shoes. Which shoes have you on? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah. I've got my street shoes on. That, that's not possible. Shoes. Uh, <laughs> I forgot. Street shoes. My organ teacher always said, you know, you can't go with your dirty shoes onto the holy pedals. And he's right, of course especially if it would be raining. Uh, and on the other hand, I remember when Moses was in conversation with God in the fiery thorn bush, um, it was God who said, Moses, put off your Birkenstock, your uh, sandals, you're on a holy ground. Moses will be an important figure this evening, so I quoted him already now. My shoes are on, and now I'm going to do my task. I will play the Sinfonia of now our cantata on the organ. What do we hear? We first hear this gesture, tirati, and then in piano, tirara, tira. It's always this semitone. And even at the beginning in the bass, la ram ta tira. First violin, tim ti na la tim ti ta ra tira ra ra ri. Those who know the chorale, Christ lag in todes banden, already might have recognized it. Christ lag in todes banden. Listen to it once again, ladies and gentlemen. Perhaps even you would like to sing of on La La with me. La 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 La. And then he goes on. Na, 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 na. So the violins say, Christ lag, Christ lag, Christ lag in Torres And the bonds, they go on and go on. So he prolongs the melody. And then he's got this sad voice. 
and then the bass going team too low for me and then here this chord is called the Neapolitan Sixth and is always for death and for sorrows. So listen to the melody. One's got the feeling it's going up. And up, what? To the cross. And it ends in major. Is this Easter music? Well, it seems to be. It was written for Easter. And it is a very well-known chorale hymn from Martin Luther. He wrote 1524. Christ lay in death's bonds. And I think it's the turning point of Easter. They look back. It's not the happiness like with the Messiah or with the oratorio. It's looking back of those terrible things which happened in the in the Passion Time, the crucifixion, and uh, all everybody was afraid and went off, and it was a catastrophe. And I've got the feeling this is looking back. It is a chorale which um, not only Johann Sebastian Bach used a lot, but also his, his predecessors, uh, his successors. Uh, it was the chorale for Easter. And I would like to now play you on the organ a version which Johann Sebastian Bach wrote for the Orgelbüchlein a few years later. And I remember my teacher, Anton Heiler, that was 1976, he said, play it very loud, very loud. It's this dam piri ta da ta da ta da ta da ta da ta going down to hell, like you find it in the cradle. I changed my registers my sounds the more i pull these knobs the louder my music is 16 by the way here if a camera quickly could could come to this this is a copy of the the original writing of johann sebastian bach and if you look at the beautiful movement You've got nearly the idea that's the way you have to play it, with a lot of swing and energy.
in an intermezzo, I would like to show you what happened in the course of the centuries that this incredible hymn got to be so well known. I go back to the year 1050. Vipo from Burgundy was a monk and he, in, he discovered the, the beauty of the theme and he wrote an uh, Easter sequence which is still sung in the Catholic Church. It's the sequence Victime Pascali Laudes. That you know what's actually happening in this sequence, I will give you a literal translation of the text. Let Christians offer sacrificial praises to the Passover victim. Now, who is the Passover victim? That's Jesus, um, because it was the time of Passover, uh, and the Christians should now give him praise. The Lamb, that's also Jesus, has redeemed the sheep, has justified the sheep and the sheep, and that's us, we. The innocent Christ has reconciled the sinners to the Father. That means Christ, who has no sin, has brought us together after a long quarrel with the Father God. Do you remember the terrible story about Adam and Eve? They were kicked out of the paradise, and afterwards they had this called or erbesünde, or the original sin. Now they are reconciled. And then a very important uh, sentence, I think. Death and life contended in a spectacular battle. The prince of life who died reigns alive. They struggled together, life and death. It was a spectacular battle. And the prince of life, Jesus, who had died at the cross, he reigns alive. After that, the apostles, you've got the feeling, the apostles come and say, tell us, Mary, what did you see on the way? She said, I saw the tomb of the living Christ and the glory of his rising. She didn't see the empty tomb, but she saw the tomb of the living Christ. The angelic witnesses, the clothes and the shroud. So the angels and the cloth, Jesus they wiped away his sweat from his forehead. She sings, Christ, my hope is arisen into Galilee. He will go before his own. Perhaps you remember the story. Jesus always told his, his apostles, uh, you know um, his disciples, you know when I have to die and I will be rising up again, uh, I will go before you to Galilee, and there we will meet, and there you will see me. We know Christ is truly risen from the dead. To us, victorious King, have mercy. Miserere nobis. Amen. Alleluia. Now let me sing this beautiful sequence for you. Victime Pascali Laude I molent Christiani, agnus redimit omes, Christus innocens patri, reconciliavit peccatores. Mors et vita duello, conflixere mirando, dux vite mortus, now the apostles, Dic nobis Maria, quid vidis de in via? Her answer, Sepulcrum Christi vimentis, et gloria vide resurgentis, angelicos testes, sudarium et testes. Surrexit Christus femnea, precedet suos in Galilea. Scimus Christum surrexit, a mortuis vire, tu nobis victorex, 
miserere. Amen. Alleluia. And if you listen to the melody, Agnus Redimitobes, na 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 na. It might remind you of the old Easter hymn, Christ is the Standen, from the Martyr alle, the sollen wir alle froh sein, Christ will unser Trost sein, Kyrie eleis. Christ is arisen. It's the first German song which was sung by the community and not only by the priests. It was in the 11th century. Martin Luther, a few centuries afterwards, thought that was a great idea. I don't want only the priests to sing these beautiful music, I also want the community to sing this marvelous music. So, he said, I'll take the old melodies, I'll put them into a, a simple form, and I'll make new words. I will try to uh, find an expression of belief which people can sing. And you know it exactly, ladies and gentlemen, all the songs you sung in your youth, and you hear them again, you are very much happy. Now listen to what happened. Christ lag in todes banden, victime pascali laudes. If I put that up, na, 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 na. And then Bach takes the semitone. Christ lag in todes banden. There you've got it. Then here goes on, imol and Christiani. So the melody comes from earlier times and is not like with such other reformers who say we kick everything out, off with the organs, we only want to have the word God here and only perhaps a psalm or things like that. Luther said, I love music and music is very near to the heart and if I sing a chorale, it's like double praying. I sing with the one of my parts of prayer and the other part is the text. So it's very important what um, Luther said. He said, der Lob sank Christ ist der Standen gebessert. And what does that mean? I'll take this praising him, Christ is arisen, Christ ist der Standen, and I'll put it even in a better way. He doesn't want to criticize the song. He loved the song very much. We know it about it. But he says, I must have more information for the people. More, what is Easter? Is Easter only Easter cake? Easter eggs like nowadays, perhaps um, boiled eggs and all these uh, things with the bunnies. I mean, it's lovely too. We enjoy it when our, when our grandchildren are running around uh, peacefully looking for their eggs. No, Christ lay in death's bound its poetry for Martin Luther, who describes and also explains the turning point called Easter. The turning point called Easter. Here he's looking back in the There, it's the Easter pleasure. So you've got both. We find seven stanzas which, written in very unwieldy German, telling us the story of the battle between Christ and death. Do you remember? Agnus redimit oves, mors et vita duello, conflixi remirando. The duelling between mors and vita, which was so uh, miraculous and wondrous. Stanza one, or if you want to say it differently, versus one. Christ was crucified for our sins. Now he is alive and has brought us life. Let us be joyful and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The stanza two. Here we find the fact described that mankind couldn't overcome death's powerful kingdom. Even here we read, hallelujah. Third stanza. But now Jesus Christ came and saved us. So death has lost his sting. He is just a cover, just mortal remains. It's difficult to believe that, but still we sing hallelujah. 
Stanza four of the song which Martin Luther wrote for us tells us the wondrous, miraculous battle between life and death. Once again, Morset vita duello, conflixi remirando. Do you want to sing it with me? You la 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 Then we find the next um, verse of stanza four. Life won the victory and swallowed up death. What a word, swallowed up death. Here we also find the verse from the Bible that one death at the other death. That's complicated. But let me explain. Jesus had to pass away. That's one death. But that was the reason that death was conquered. Now death is a ridicule, a mockery, and again, hallelujah. And I think that's also difficult to believe that death is a ridicule. But Luther says, sing hallelujah. Stanza five, no chance for death, the strangler, der Würger. Like in the feast of Passover, where the Israelites marked the, their doors with blood to hold away the revenging angel, the blood of the Easter lamb has rescued us. Hallelujah. When we come to that stanza, I will explain a bit more of this complicated reverence to the Old Testament. The second last stanza, now is the time of our heart's delight, God is our son. And then the beautiful dark lightning, his light enlightens us and also the night of sins, hallelujah. And the last stanza, the question of the right Easter cake. Also quite complicated, I hope afterwards I can explain it again. Not the sordo one, nicht der Sauerteig, like mentioned in the letter to the Corinthians, but the sweet dough one, talking of grace. Like, of course, also in the, in the Old Testament, for the Passover, they always had sweet bread. Christ himself should be our food. Of course, I think immediately about the Last Supper. I think it's very important for really could to be able to enjoy the cantata in the full energy that you know the melody very well because the melody is omnipresent and so I would like to end this uh, second part, this uh, intermezzo in singing the first stanza for you and accompanying me on the organ with the right shoes, Schwann. Thank you. I was asked by a few of my friends, what are you doing with these funny sort of knobs here? Of course, organists exactly know this is uh, the registration. Let's say, if I take this one here, I have... Uh, I can build up... a forefoot... Two foot, a mixture, a trumpet, I can also use the pedals. And here on this paper, I wrote the numbers two to four, seven to nine, 13, 14, and 19. And here on this blue paper, camera please. Christ lag in todes Bangen, für unsere Sünd gegeben. Just only the melody. And also the pupils of Bach, of Buxtehude, of Böhm, they had to have the choral melody in their head, and they made the accompaniment themselves.
Now, we go in, we dig in, we come to number two of the Bach Cantata. It's the first stanza, and I would like to do it in this way. I will first sing you the Cantus Firmus. That's the main plain melody. And if you like, why not sing with me? You can do it on La La, you can do it with the text. You will always find it on the screen, but you can also listen and say, I prefer to hear the music. Now, Christ lag im Todesbanden. Let's do it once again. Christ lag im Todesbanden. Three times I would say. Christ lag im Todesbanden. Christ lay in death's bound. That would be a literal, literal uh, translation. What happens? We've got a long, long, long Christ. Christ lying us That's the main melody. Then we've got the other voices. Christ lag, Christ lag, Christ lag. The violins, Chris Lark, Chris Lark, Chris Lark. And then the violins go on. It's like a crown on the music. And listen to the harmonies when it says Todus Band in the Death's Bound. Now, with my good old friend Roland and uh, old Rudy, we will perform this first part. You listen, you can sing with me. I will anyway give a guy's entry when the Cantus Firmus comes, and that's just at the beginning. <laughs> Take it once again, and I can sing one voice. Which word would you like, the alto, the tenor, or the or the bass? The alto. The alto. Okay, I'll sing like that. I'll try. My Roland jumped up at note and I had to transpose death immediately. We could come to the next um, part. It's called Für unsere sind gegeben. Let's try. Für unsere sind And what does the alto sing? Für unsere Sünd, the bass. Für unsere Sünd. Quite bluesy. La da da di da 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 di da da da. La da 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 da. For our sins. And this is the way Bach always reacts on the text. Let us play this part. We just do it again, and I'll sing for you the Cantus Firmus. And I'll just.
girls do it once again and I'll sing the tenor. The third stanza, the third verse is Ihr ist wieder erstanden We sing it Ihr ist wieder erstanden It's the repetition of the first one Let's do it on La La, 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 la And what does he do in the treating of the chorale? He starts with the alto and does Ihr ist wieder erstanden then the tenor comes here with a melody and the bass goes on with a melody. What happens in the other voices? Here is to be Here is to be going down to hell, up into heaven. Erstanden, saying yes. He is arisen again. Listen to both. And the violins. So you see, it's a combination of choral melody, of counterpoint. That's a, a voice which leads in a sort of a, um, a personal way in the right harmonies with the main cantus firmus together. And this sounds like this. Let me go ahead, that I don't make any transposition mistakes with Roland. He's quite tricky. Here we are. try this once again and I would like to invite you to sing the Cantus Firmus. Let's do it once again. Fourth verse is Und hat uns bracht das Leben and has brought us life. Let's sing it. Und hat uns bracht das Leben Und hat uns bracht das Leben The tenor sings that. Und hat uns bracht das Alto immediately comes in und hat uns und hat uns bracht das Leben. Isn't this astonishing on the Leben, on life? We've got Leben. Perhaps we realize here that Bach says, you know, life is very sensitive and it completely can crunch in. Leben, das Leben. Und hat uns bracht das Leben. The bass. And here the tenor immediately comes in. Und hat das bracht das Leben. And even the, uh, the alto comes in. And the bass. Then the tenor. Now here the alto. goes on. 
I would like to do this with you, and I ask you to try to follow all these voices, it's difficult, I know, and perhaps to sing the Cantus Firmus. Now this was the first, first four of the verses of the first stanza. And now, I'm sure you also realize it, working like this, doing these analyzing jobs is really hard. And I think we need a little break. And so I thought, doing a little, uh, little job for you, listening, can you find out which famous Cantus Firmus I'm using now on the pedals with the reeds in the tenor, and I can give you a hint, it is a very well-known spiritual. I'll play it in the Bach style, of course. If you hear the Cantus Firmus alone, let my people go. The beginning. See, it's important that you really know the Cantus Firmus and then you can enjoy it. I think we could go on now, taking the next four verses of the first stanza. Des wir sollen fröhlich sein. That is, des wir sollen fröhlich sein. Des wir sollen fröhlich sein. We want to be joyful. This is what is our job now. Here the singers go on. Des wir sollen fröhlich 
fröhlich, dass wir sollen fröhlich, 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 fröhlich sein. Also the violins. I recorded it with the two little interludes before and after or from the orchestra. Lovely here, the minor music once now at last goes to major. Then comes the most highest part of the Cantus Firmus. Gott loben und ihm dankbar sein. Shall we try? Gott loben und ihm dankbar sein. Here's a new counterpoint. Gott loben, Gott loben, Gott loben, Gott loben, Gott loben. So we've got the counterpoint, we've got the melody coming in the tenor, the bass, and then afterwards directly with the cantus firmus. We do that together, we listen. Listen to these two beautiful turning thirds. Shall we sing together und singen? Und singen im Halleluja. The bass. Und singen im Halleluja. Then the alto and then the soprano stops being in long notes. It's sort of getting exciting. Shall we do this together? Und singen im Halleluja, und singen Halleluja, und singen Halleluja, und singen Halleluja, und singen Halleluja. Here he could be finished, but Bach has even a next idea to be a, giving a thrilling hallelujah. He takes a uh, la breve, that means a double speed, and it takes the hallelujah, which goes hallelujah. We sing it. Hallelujah. And if you don't like singing, just listen to it. Hallelujah. What does he do? He makes a syncopation. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Two elements. This di jampa ba ba. You want to sing it once? Da da ba da da. Di da 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 da. Got a really jazzy feeling, and then the next melody is Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. I recorded it. Um, am I ready to make no mistakes with my Roland? Be a nice boy, please. Here we should be. Yes, it's right, it's right, it's right, it's right. One, two, one, two, three, four. Hallelujah, 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 hallel
Wow. Can you imagine a 20 year old guy making such a music? And he says, No, death is here, but uh, the hallelujah is stronger. Now, I would like to finish this long part, which took us really time, but is for me very crucial because I want to tell you if you want to really enjoy a chorale cantata from Bach, and there are quite a few, then you have to know the chorale. The better you know the chorale, the more you will enjoy it when you recognize it and say, that's the leading thing. Like I told you, a cantus firmus. So now I'll go to the organ and I will ask Schwann to always give uh, the sign to our big bosses at the background that they can uh, blend in the text. And you can, if you want to sing with me the Cantus Firmus, I will also sing it. And if you prefer to listen it, please just listen to it. I will improvise the accompaniment. I will always do interludes. And then uh, we will really say, now we've done a good job for the first stanza. Christ was crucified for our sins. Now he is alive and has brought us life. Let us be joyful and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sorry that I couldn't hear you, I would have loved to. Now, here we are, at the moment where we ask, how is it going on? I think I will shorten this part, and I hope you will take time um, at home after this session here in Stein, or perhaps tomorrow or on the next days, to listen to um, beautiful performance of the cantata Christlag in Todesbanden. And I wonder if it will be different for you when you listen to the Cantus Firmus. Number two, that's the stanza two, it's a number three in um, our um, cantata. Now Jesus Christ came and saved us, so death has lost his sting. He is just a cover just mortal remains. What happens here? This bass we were mentioning in the first talk. It 
it's a scale going down. Ta da da. And the soprano sings, Tem to, Tem to, Tem to, You've got the semitone here and the alto. Tem to, Tem to, Tem to. And now nobody could force him. Listen how the terrible dissonance come here. So Bach does it like in the symphonia. Dem tut, dem tut, dem tut, dem tut. And now he doesn't go. it because death is at power. This goes like in this way, one for one, always with his bass. If you remember the hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. How is the hallelujah here? And if you listen to the alto, if you see death in front of you and you have to sing hallelujah, perhaps it doesn't sound like in the first part. So you see, every hallelujah in this cantata will be different. We come to the fourth number, the verse 3. If you remember, but now Jesus Christ came and saved us, so death has lost his sting. He is just a cover, just a mortal remains. Hallelujah. You've got a violin. Sorry for the mistakes you see after practice. And then the bass you've got. Four cadences in different keys, like this. The tenor sings. Herr Jesus Christus, Gottes Sohn, an unsere Stadt ist gekommen. Jesus Christ came and said, Get out, death, are all his rights and his power. Here remains nothing but death's outward form. And then what happens here? All sein Recht und sein Gewalt verbleibt nichts. A great pause on the word nothing. Den Tod's Gewalt. And what does the tenor sing for the Hallelujah? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So you see a completely different effect and another way of showing how you work with the choral. You could really say it's not the art of fugue, but you could say this cantata is the art of choral. Now we come to the middle part, the big um, choir part, and uh, the text is, Es war ein wunderlicher Krieg. 
You hear the melody, and immediately the answer, the bass, it's number five, the verse is four in the middle of the cantata. It was a strange battle where death and life struggled. You remember? And then the cantus firmus is not in the soprano but in the alto. In B minor, perhaps this is the miraculous war. And we find here. The wrestling of life. Listen if I play this slowly. So here he shows a real motet. Every voice has got a single task to solve. Sometimes it's a part of the cantus firmus, sometimes it's a counterpoint. Then it says, Die Schrift hat verkündiget das. Scripture has proclaimed. I like it very much. Actually, it is, Die Schrift hat verkündiget. You remember the chorale? What does Bach do? Die Schrift hat verkündiget, das verkündiget war. You see, he takes the choral melody, but he variates it in the way that the effect is okay. Then comes the mockery, death as a mockery. He just does cuckoos. Of course, he takes the cuckoo from the Cantus Firmus. And then listen to what the music does. Does this sound like mockery? I don't know if Bach really wanted to say, let's say death is a ridicule, a mockery. He knows how ter terribly a deathly death is. And then the hallelujah, hallelujah. I prepared this piece because I think it's a very important one. And I will sing the Cantus Firmus with you. And uh, you can, if you want to, sing with this or you can read the the writing of this beautiful piece. Es war ein wunderlicher Krieg, da tut und lieben Fuhr. Es war ein wunderlicher Krieg, da tut und lieben Ruhe.
also hear a completely different hallelujah. First, I thought of playing an organ piece, but I now decided on something different. You know, Johannes Brahms wrote a German requiem on texts of the Bible, and there he took that um, letter to the Corinthians, um, which let me show you my old score. I had four years, we conducted it, I conducted it the first time in, in 1989, and I played it a lot. And here, the, the, the Paul, the Apostle Paul, lets people know Der Tod ist verschlungen in den Sieg. Death is swallowed up by the victory, and then he says afterwards, Death, where is your sting? Death, where is your sting? Hell, where is your victory? And I would like to play with Roland together this incredibly lovely piece. Perhaps you sometimes hear that Rudolf Lutz, in his introductions for the cantatas, he quotes Brahms. And perhaps here we realize that this is the music which really fits to the Bachian music. Saying, I know where you are, death, but I say, where is your victory? Once again, tot, tot, tot. Schwann, isn't it an incredible music? What are your thoughts when you listen to this? Well. Well, Rudy, uh, first of all, that was absolutely remarkable, and I think it's been the, almost the climax of the, your presentation today. And I also believe it's the climax of religious music, of Western religious music, after the Mass in B minor and the Missa Solemnis. Brahms wrote this wonderful piece. By the way, I think he was quite young when he completed it, about 33, three years younger than I am at the moment. You just imagine what a genius. Uh, it's also interesting to note that he wrote parts of it in Switzerland, as far as I know. I think in, in Winterthur, uh, some parts were written. Um, so there is a Swiss connection to it. Uh, I would actually have a dream at the moment, which is to see your ensemble, uh, choir and orchestra of the Bach Foundation, perform this piece someday, when all cantatas are done. What do you think about that idea? I think, Schwann, that would be an incredible idea. It's one of my favorite pieces. And do you know what I would match to it? I would start with a, the cantata from Johann Sebastian Bach, Chris Lag in Todesband. This one, I think it fits so well. It's sort of the same way to say, I look back 
but I know Easter is the turning point. Let me come to the last part. It is the verse 5, the stanza 5. He is das rechte Osterlamm. Here is the true Easter lamb that God has offered, davon Gott hat geboten, which high on the trunk of the cross, das ist hoch an des Kreuzes Stamm, and listen to this now, is roasted in burning love, in heißer Lieb gebraten. That's Luther at his best. Das Blut zeichnet unsere Tür, whose blood marks our doors, um, which faith holds in front of death. Das hält der Glaub dem Tode für. Say, get off. Der Würger, that's the strangler, can harm us no more. Then he comes and does, der Würger kann uns nicht, 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 nicht mehr schaden. Der Tod ist verschlungen in den Sieg. You see, you can just go back to Brahms. It's lovely. First, it's the basso continuo who comes in doing la da 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 da. The right Easter lamb. And the blood. Do you remember I was talking about it? Passover. That was the, the, uh, the time when. When Israel was in Egypt's land. Then if not as my your firstborn dead, let my people go. So the Lord said, go down, Moses. Yes, uh, Louis Armstrong, by the way, also sings it in a lovely growling, growling way. But here it is the uh, remembering of that moment when the Israelites, they one told them, you have to uh, offer a lamb and take the blood of the lamb and put it on the posts of your door, then the revenging angel, angel will pass over. I imagine that's the reason why it's called Passover. And the right Easter lamb is Christ, so the crucifixion is important. You see, na, 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 na. And then here, he is das rechte Osterlamm. Du, 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 du. Was that the soprano? Yes, here, of course, but it's the violin. So you see, the basso continuo saying this is such an important component like the bass who's singing. This evening, it would have been great Klaus Mertens, who would have sung this beautiful solo, and he would have been capable also to sing those very low notes, which sound like a, an old hum when I take them. So it's violin one, it's uh, the bass going back and forth, and then when it says which high on the trunk of the cross, then we have this in the violins. <laughs> because you know the chorale, you realize something's happening. It's in the triple time, but here it takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight notes to come to the end. Yeah. Then the blood, which um, marks our door. You see here the basso continuo. Das Blut zeichnet unsere Tür. It just does. Das Blut zeichnet. Then the bass singer comes. Das Blut zei, then the violins come. Das Blut zei, the bass again. Das Blut zei, then the continuo. Das Blut zei, five times it comes, and not only in the in the main voice of the bass, but also in the main voice of the basso continuo and in the main voice of the violins. And the violin too, and the violas make beautiful accompaniment. I showed you the strangler. He just keeps the note going, 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 going on, going on, going on, going on, going on. Kann uns nicht mehr strangeln. That would be the idea of the choral, but he does. Kann uns nicht, 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 
nicht mehr schaden. Der Ball in das, der würde, kann uns nicht schaden. And the bass singer does, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And then here another beautiful ecstatic Alleluia. Halle, 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 Of course, this singer doesn't do Halle, Halle. I was trying to sing the violin and the bass together and playing the continuo. So you see, I always have to have my friend helping me to play all the other voices. At the end, you've got this roaring violin thing. Yes, this is it. I think it's such an important piece. I ask you for patience. I might take five or ten minutes longer as planned, but I think I have this, this message for you. Listen to this. I'll find it on my Roland, and I'm ready to go to perform the number six, the verses five. Das rechte Osterland, das rechte, rechte Osterland, da von Gott hat's gemolten, da von dir, 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 am Tana, la, 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 da siehst du Das Das Blut zeigt, das Blut zeigt, das Blut zeigt, das Blut zeigt. Das Blut zeichnet The seventh verse, it's the stanza six. Thus we celebrate the high feast with joy in our hearts and delight. Here we find the German word Wonne. So feiern wir das hohe Fest, das hohe Fest mit Herzensfreude und Wonne. And Bach has a great idea. He takes the rhythm of the kings. Ram, ba -bam, ba -bam, ba -bam. And he lets the soprano sing our melody we recognize. The tenor tira, 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 mit Herzensfreude. Word of Wonne, a lovely word. I think it's one of one of the pleasurable words in German. Is you could translate it with delight. It always reminds me of spring. And if you think of um, the the Palmarum Cantata, 
You've got the same rhythm. It's Jesus coming into Jerusalem on the donkey. And the hallelujah is here. Hallelujah, 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 Then we come to the last verse. Wir essen und leben wohl in rechten Osterfladen. Here the Easter cake really comes up. We eat and live well on the right Easter cakes. The old sordo should not be with word grace. Christ will be our food and alone feed the soul. Faith will live in no other way. Hallelujah. Here we've got it now. Jesus as the Easter cake, you remember Passover people don't have any uh, sword dough cakes, also keinen Sauerteig, sondern einen Kuchen, einen süßen Kuchen. Jesus should be our um, sweet cake, and of course we think of the Last Supper. I would like to end my introduction and presentation of this cantata with an organ piece. And I thought it might be a nice idea, Schwann, you are a musician, you sing, you play the piano, you know a lot of music. And uh, I would like to ask you, could you give me a theme, an idea, which I could use um, for to end this presentation? I would surely sing the last verse, uh, and then afterwards pay, play a short postlude. Well, well, certainly I can do that. What strikes me most about this ending of the cantata is this idea of Christus will die Koste sein und allein die Seele speisen. So Christ should be and ought to be and is the real the the uh, the, uh, the food for the soul that we need. Uh, I think that's a very powerful idea, and so I think it will be very interesting to hear what your mind and fingers perform on that theme. Well, it's a fascinating theme, really. And if I think of the Last Supper, we've got one part. Perhaps you remember it in the. Matthew Passion, and uh, I think it's the bass singer. <laughs> or is it in G major? <laughs> remember it exactly but I remember the music and so I think I will play the last stanza the seventh stanza wir essen und leben wohl im rechten Oster glauben im rechten Osterfladen Christus will die Koste sein und speisen die Seele allein and then end this evening for you thank you very much ladies and gentlemen well while you get ready to perform, I would also like to say thank you to our audience for listening from all over the world. It might be not the last time that we have to put up, put on an alternative program to a cantata performance. But um, I think it's been a very interesting alternative. We've learned a lot and we've witnessed, I think, almost a thousand years of Western music in an hour and a half. So thank you very much to Rudy for this performance. And thank you for watching. All the best.